Layla Alabad, who is a regional organizer with We the People in Southeast Michigan. She's a proud daughter of Palestinian immigrants, number 12 of her 14 brothers and sisters, and mother of three fierce future social justice warriors. Layla has been a longtime advocate for intimate partner violence and sexual assault prevention, environmental justice issues, voter rights, and movements that amplify justice and the voices of Black and brown communities. We are also bringing on Sa uh, Saba Syed, who is a student at Michigan State. Uh, she is a Palestinian American, and she is the head of the Arab Culture Association at her school. And she was also uh, on Face the Nation recently, where she was asked if she would be voting for Joe Biden. So welcome, Layla and Saba. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. You? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so good. let's play this video that uh, caused such a firestorm of you on Face the Nation. Saba, you said reproductive rights are a huge factor for you, but that you probably won't vote for President Biden. I think it would be hypocritical of me to use reproductive rights as a way to justify voting for Biden when Biden is aiding and sending military aid to Israel, which is airstriking Gaza and blocking humanitarian aids, leading to women there who are pregnant, um, either getting C-sections without anesthesia, not being able to be provided with prenatal Natal care. Saba, explain to us where you're joining us from, because you have an interesting background happening right now. Oh, yeah. So as of right now, this might have to switch to a setting. But as of right now, I'm in this McDonald's randomly. And I'm not buying anything. I didn't buy anything. Support the boycott. But because um, the Sterling Heights, which is like an hour and a half from where I live, they're having their city council. And they've been the constituents of like Sterling Heights have been asking for a ceasefire resolution. They keep denying them. But one of the councilmen, Mr. Councilman Mike, he decided to retweet my video a lot of the times saying so many things and then first was saying like this is the dumbest thing what is my timeline and then the other thing was that he said these people are ushering their doom and it was like again the picture it was the video retweeting of me and Thassen, who's my co-panelist on face the nation and i'm like sir maybe focus on what your constituents wants and get off twitter and people won't be mad nice but so you're gonna speak truth to power to him tonight yeah, somebody, um, this one girl, she reached out to me and she said, hey, like, I think it would be like very powerful if you were to come to say it, because I was going to speak on your behalf on this, but if you can make it. And yeah, I forgot that it was today. And that's oh, okay. Yeah. Layla, what is your role in this discussion that we're having tonight? I'm here tonight um, as the campaign, campaign manager for the Listen to Michigan Uncommitted Vote campaign. Um, and this is our, um, this is a strategy that a very grassroots strategy um, of Michigan uh, community organizers saying that we are going to be voting uncommitted in the Michigan Democratic primary on February 27th. So I'd ask both of you, what is it that's motivating you? Uh, Saba, you, you started to talk about this, but tell us more about why you are either uncommitted or not going to vote for Biden. I think that for my answer, <laughs> depending on which crowd's listening, there's two parts to my answer where it's me as a Palestinian um, that is living here and has the privilege of living here. And the only thing that's differentiating me from my other Palestinians that are in Gaza right now is just my location. It is my duty to speak out about it. I think it's my responsibility and it's not, I always say it's not to be applauded, it's to be expected. Um, and another thing is that fact that I'm also an American citizen in this country and somebody who's taken AP US history and I've taken eighth grade social studies where they hounded us with our Bill of Rights, our constitution and how we're the great nation that I think that we need to be upholding that constitution democracy, especially when we as a country were established on a genocide that we still kind of refuse to acknowledge uh, fully and it's still controversial to acknowledge the fact that we were built on slavery and segregation and discrimination in the name of a democracy and we go to other places claiming that we're helping them out because they're so savages and whatnot so i think that as an american it's also my duty to make sure that those running in office 
practice what they preach because if we're going to be the greatest country of them all we need to be actually doing that you know actions speak louder than words so i think that it's every american's responsibility actually to call out our politicians and leila tell us more about this initiative this project that you're launching what it's going to be doing yeah so with this um collect because really it is a collective effort there's no brand there's no um, one organization affiliated um, with uh, Listen to Michigan because it is such a, um, it's such a, it's something, it's an action that resonates with so many um, folks from uh, the Arab American community, the Muslim American community, but also the anti-war and pro-ceasefire voters. Um, so it's, it has been a collective effort of all these amazing organizers and we have support from uh, local and uh, national uh, organizations, as well as our electeds. Our uh, mayor, Abdullah Hamoud, is 100% supportive of the efforts of Listen uh, Listen to Michigan and the uncommitted vote. Um, and, you know, right now, President Joe Biden, he is not representing the 80% of Democrats who want a ceasefire or the Muslim Arabs and young people who put him in office in 2020 because it was largely the Arab American Muslim vote that got Joe Biden to win his election in 2020 in Michigan. Um, we are now out protesting his policies in the streets. He has broken uh, a fundamental trust and no amount of lecturing about the greater evil, the lesser of greater evils in 2024 will repair that. So I'm going to ask you about that because I'm sure you get this all the time, right? That, oh, you're yeah. enabling Trump. Trump's a fascist. Trump is worse than Biden. Biden's bad, but it's going to be worse under Trump. Mm -hmm. So what's your guys' response to that? Well, we're aware, well aware that Trump is not our friend. There is a long time between now and November for Biden to change his policy and possibly earn support from voters. But time is running out and Biden's funding of Netanyahu's war makes a mockery of the president that claimed to fight authoritarianism and for democracy um, when Trump was in office. You know, he made a lot of promises during his campaign trail. And, you know, he promised that he was, his president, presidency was going to be rooted in humanitarian politics. And he has completely abandoned that. Um, and, you know, we have 80% of Democratic voters who support a ceasefire to back that up. And what would he need to do to earn your votes and the votes of others? You know, the very bare minimum to even begin talking about what support from the Arab American community, the Muslim American community, and the pro ceasefire community, just to have those discussions, um, minimum would to be to support a permanent ceasefire in Gaza and to reevaluate his policy around um, military funding to Israel. Um, and we make no promises, but this is this would be a start to, right. to gain our trust. And what about you, Saba? For Joe Biden to win my vote, I think that it's going to be hard um, as long, um, I mean, the only thing, a permanent and immediate ceasefire is kind of what's expected right now. That's not just going to solve everything. And I think that um, that military aid that is going to Israel, good, using that same money when you do call for um, a permanent ceasefire into fixing the damages that we got caused in Gaza and ensuring that the siege is lifted on it. And then also, actually, I don't think that he should be running again. I mean, he did violate the Constitution. No consequences there. So actually initiating those steps and then stepping away to let somebody else, um, because at some point you messed up too much. You need to pay. You need to pay for the mur like genocide joke. You've murdered over 30,000 people and you don't get just like a good job. Now you're doing a ceasefire. I've gotten a lot of the comments about Trump as well. And it's um. It's baffling to me because a lot of the comments are like, well, have fun when he bans um, Muslims, sir. So you're basically telling me that I have to choose between a president that violated the Constitution and another president that is saying publicly that he will be violating the First Amendment right, your freedom of religion. And then um, a lot of the people were making a comment about reproductive rights as well. Like, we'll have fun with Trump with doing that. Like, 
also again we should not be encouraging the less evil but blatantly saying they're gonna not uphold the values of this country um what i do hope that people kind of get from what i said is that hey you need to start acting now you need to start being more aware of your surrounding and that your advocacy or your call for human rights actually extends to all humans it does not just mean like here within the u.s right right i i, I thought it was great when you brought up reproductive rights because i think for some people their feminism like ends at the border mm -hmm. And that's not real feminism or human rights. What is it that you're saying violated the Constitution? When Joe Biden bombed Yemen without the approval of ah, Congress, right. that is a yeah. big no-no. Um, right. And exactly, yeah. surpassing Congress for more aid. He's saying that he can do things without seeking congressional approval. And it's interesting because yeah. there's certain things he pretends that he'd love to do but can't without congressional approval, and then he doesn't do them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Leila, I know you have to run off and thank you for your time. I know how busy you are. Any final words that you want to share? Also would love to hear about your family's experience in Palestine and if you still have family yeah. there. I have my whole, um, on my mother's side, my whole family is is there um, in occupied West Bank. Um, and actually my mom was in Palestine. She was in Palestine uh, visiting her family when during October when this all happened. Um, and so it was, you know, I, I felt stressed. I, you know, said today, like I've never watched Al Jazeera more in my life than I did during that time. Um, and I, I just remember every day, just this, this worrisome and, you know, uh, just really worried for my mom and not really know what was going to happen. And I just can't imagine what it's like every day for our brothers and sisters in Palestine and Palestine and the Gaza right now. Um, as they are experiencing a genocide and an apartheid. I want to make a quick yeah. comment of is that this uncommitted campaign moves across, you know, um, cities and uh, ethnicities, ethnicities, religion. Um, and it's a really a vote for um, humanity. So, you know, wh whatever your politics are, if you believe in humanity, then vote uncommitted. February 27th in the Michigan Democratic primary. And for people who aren't in Michigan, what should they be doing? Yeah. Um, well, there's Sorry. right now, there's a lot of like national talks that we're talking to other um, other states that do have an uncommitted option or, you know, there, there are other options and we are actually working um, on what that might look like, how we can connect other states into the uncommitted campaign. So more to come in the future.